Hello all, welcome to this video on matrix decompositions. Today I will be talking about singular value decomposition. Singular value decomposition, that is SVD of a matrix, is a central matrix decomposition method in linear algebra. It has been referred to as the fundamental theorem of linear algebra because it can be applied to all matrices, not only to square matrices, and it always exists. Moreover, as we will explore in the following, the SVD of a matrix A, which represents a linear mapping phi from the vector space V to W, quantifies the change between the underlying geometry of these two vector spaces. Let A, M cross N, be a rectangular matrix of rank R, which is an element of 0 to minimum of M or N. Then the SVD of A is a decomposition of the form A, which is a matrix of size M cross N, which can be written as matrix U, which is of the size M cross M, sigma, which is of the size M cross N, and V transpose, which is of the size N cross N. With an orthogonal matrix U, which is of the size m cross m with column vectors u i where i belongs from the range 1 to m and an orthogonal matrix v which is of the size n cross n with column vectors v j where j belongs to 1 to n moreover sigma is an m cross n matrix with sigma i i which is equal to each element of the sigma will be greater than or equal to 0 and sigma ij will be equal to 0 if i not equal to j. The diagonal entries sigma i where i ranges from 1 to r of the matrix sigma are called the singular values. ui are called the left singular values and vj are called the right singular vectors. By convention, the singular values are ordered that is sigma 1 greater than or equal to sigma 2, greater than or equal to sigma r, which are all greater than or equal to 0. The singular value matrix sigma is unique and rectangular. In particular, it is of the same size as A. This means that sigma has a diagonal submatrix that contains the singular values and needs additional zero padding. Specifically, if M is greater than N, then the matrix sigma has a diagonal structure of up to rho N and then consists of zero transpose rho vectors from N plus 1 to M. Thus, the matrix sigma will look like this. In the case where M is less than N, the matrix sigma has a diagonal structure of up to column M and columns that consist of 0 from M plus 1 to N. This will be the matrix sigma. Now we look into the geometric intuition for SVD. SVD offers geometric intuitions to describe a transformation matrix A. In the following, we will discuss SVD as a sequential linear transformation performed on the basis. SVD of a matrix can be interpreted as a decomposition of a corresponding linear mapping phi from the vector space n dimensional to the vector space that is m dimensional into three operations. The SVD intuition follows supervisually a similar structure to our Eigen decomposition intuition. Broadly speaking, the SVD performs a basis change via V transpose, followed by scaling and augmentation or reduction in dimensionality via the singular value matrix sigma, and finally, it performs a second basis change using U.
Assume we are given a transformation matrix of a linear mapping phi, which is mapped from R raised to N to R raised to M with respect to the standard basis B and C of R raised to N and R raised to M respectively. Moreover, assume a second basis B tilde of R raised to N and C tilde of R raised to M. Then, the matrix V performs a basis change in the domain R raised to N from B tilde that is represented by the red and orange vectors V1 and V2 in the top left to the standard basis B. We know that V transpose is equal to V inverse and this performs a basis change from B to B tilde. The red and orange vectors are now aligned with the canonical basis in the bottom left. Having changed the coordinate system to B tilde, sigma scales the new coordinates by the singular values sigma i and adds or deletes dimensions that is sigma is the transformation matrix of phi with respect to B tilde and C tilde that is represented by the red and orange vectors being stretched and lying in the E1, E2 plane which is now embedded in a three dimension in the bottom right. U performs a basis change in the core domain R raised to M from C tilde into the canonical basis of R raised to M represented by a rotation of the red and orange vectors out of the E1, E2 plane. This is shown in the top right. SVD expresses a change of basis in both the domain and codomain. This is in contrast with the Eigen decomposition that operates within the same vector space, where the same basis change is applied and then undone. What makes the SVD special is that the two different bases are simultaneously linked by the singular value matrix sigma. Now we will see an example. Consider a mapping of a square grid of vectors psi, which is a two dimensional grid that fit in a box of size 2 into 2 that is centered at this origin, as shown here. Using the standard basis, we will map these vectors using the matrix A. Now we need to decompose the matrix A into U, sigma and V transpose. The final answer is given here. Now we will start with the set of vectors that is the given grid. We will apply V transpose which is a 2 by 2 matrix which rotates this grid. The rotated vectors are shown here. We now map these vectors using the singular value matrix sigma to the codomain R cube. Note that all the vectors lie in the x1, x2 plane. The third coordinate is always 0. The vectors in the x1, x2 plane has been stretched by the singular values. The direct mapping of the vectors, that is the given grid, by A to the core domain R cube equals the transformation of the grid by U sigma and V transpose where U performed the rotation within the core domain R cube so that the mapped vectors are no longer restricted to the x1, x2 plane. They still are on a plane as shown in the diagram. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.